Paul talking to the Philippians, they have the same God. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Take it to the Amplified. <clears throat> so he says, do not fret. Let's, say, let's, say, let's do it together. One, two, three. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance and everything, by prayer and petition, definite request, which is with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. So whenever something comes up, you just take it back to him. Just, just say, Lord, thank you. So it says here, you, you, in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request, uh, you do that with thanksgiving. So you have to do it with thanksgiving and tell God, Lord, I want to thank you. Uh, I'm going to cast it on you. I want to thank you that you can take care of that. Hallelujah. Lift your hand up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I cast every care on you, every need. In the name of Jesus, I want to thank you right now that you're doing something about that. And I'm going to continue to thank you in Jesus' name. So every time you have a, 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 a thought that's come, coming contrary to what you've asked, to, asked the Lord, you're going to offer the prayer of thanksgiving. You're going to thank him. If you believe in God for anything, you just go ahead and offer the prayer of thanksgiving. When you find a scripture, you say, God, I want to thank you. That's what you said in your word. I just want to thank you for that privilege of asking you this, and you said that, you know, you would do that. And, and that's what he says. So all those, uh, no, let's go read uh, verse 7. After you've done that, and the peace of God, and God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of soul assurance of its salvation through Christ. So fearing nothing from God and being content with his earthly loss or whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison Mount Guard over your hearts and minds. God is going to hover over you. And he's going to put his wings over you and protect you Hallelujah. from every evil. You can be at peace. Uh, let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. The Lord has been speaking to me about Psalm 91. And to read that and to, and to look at it. And to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Let's read the same in the Amplified. The benefits of coming under submission to God. Submitting our lives to God. And uh, the King James said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says this. Verse 2 says this to King James. He said, I will say of the Lord. Let me ask you something. What do you say of the Lord when you have trouble? Or are you saying what the circumstance says, or are you saying what the Lord says? And that's a distinction between the one who's going to win and the one who's going to continue to lose the battle year after year after year, whatever sort of battle they're in. We're going to continue to thank God. We're going to continue to put our focus on Him. Let's go to Psalm 91 and verse 1 again. In the, in the Amplified. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable. Isn't that what we want? Stability? And fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. You know, Isaiah 54, 17 I was reading this morning, one of, my, one of my readings this morning, Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, anybody that comes against you, I'm going to come against them. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54, 17. And he told, he told, you know, one of the benefits of being a child of Abraham or a child of faith, child of Abraham, child of faith, because Abraham is a father of faith. He says that, 
I want to fight your battles. And that's why I've learned that whenever someone criticizes me, if it's on Facebook or whatever, television or whatever, I don't even, I don't even pay attention to them. I don't have to back it up. I don't have to fight them back. You know, I don't have to. God's the one that fights your battles. He said in Isaiah 54, 17, he says, hey, listen, I'll vindicate you. I'll, I'll be there for you. And so he said, shall remain stable under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no fool can withstand. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. On him I lean, rely, and him I will confidently trust. Who are you leaning on? What are you leaning on? So if you want to remain stable, then we have to lean on the everlasting God. God's word is sure. So he says, I will say to the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God. I lean and rely in him. I confidently trust. Then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings thou shalt trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night nor the arrow of the, or evil plots of the slanders of the wicked that flies by day. No, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction that Sudden death that surprises and lay waste at new day. Go to verse 10. There shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near you. Verse 11. For you shall give his angels a special charge over you to, to accompany, defend you, preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. And when we serve God, he's going to be there to protect us and to help us. He says in verse 19, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. Has a personal knowledge of my mercy and, and my, my love and kindness and trusts and relies on me knowing that I will never forsake him. No, never. First Peter. Let's go back to First Peter. He said, I'll never, I'll never forsake you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be there. I'm going to be with you. And, you know, verse 16, it says, uh, I'll be with him in trouble. I'll be with him in trouble. And every one of us tonight, I'm sure he has some kind of trouble. You don't even have to be wicked to be in trouble. <laughs> All you have to try to do is serve God and you get into trouble. You know? Thank God. Okay, let's go to First Peter again. <clears throat> Verse 8. He says, casting all the cares on the Lord. And King James says, for he cares for you. Verse 8 says, the King James, First Peter 5, 8, be sober. Why does he say be sober? He, he, the, the Amplified says, be well balanced, tempered, sober of mind. Uh, the, you know, um, I was reading um, Luke, it says, you know, that we can be drunk on the cares of this world. In Luke. We can be so inebriated, so full of the cares of the world that it affects us in so many different ways. And I was reading, uh, you know, we teach uh, at the school there, that uh, 90%, they say, I mean, that's a pretty, you know, uh, generous figure, 90-some percent of all sicknesses are, are related, stress-related. Even various kinds of cancer come from that. That's what some findings and uh, we need to learn how to relax in God. No wonder the Lord is telling us to relax. Yes. Trust in Him. Rely on Him. 
Jesus said over the sixth chapter, he said, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. What's wrong with that Jesus anyway? <laughs> you know? Doesn't he know I got this problem over here? He, he said, don't worry. No. He says, uh, be sober because your adversity, this is the uh, King James, the devil. Well, who do you talk about devils for? Well, there is one, or, and there's many demons. They do his bidding. He said, the devil, what does he do? What does the devil do? As a roaring lion walks about seeking someone who he may devour. But what do we do about that? Hide and make sure he doesn't see us and go in the closet and don't say anything. Make sure he don't live a Christian life so that he might attack me if I start living like a Christian. No, 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 no. Uh, we need to know who we are. Yeah. You're victorious. Yeah. You're a winner. Yeah. You're more than a conqueror. Pastor Roma Fisher's autobiography entitled Roma Nadishtikas, Ojibwe for My Name is Roma, will be released in the spring of 2015. Follow Roma's inspired and painful journey growing up as a First Nations person in the North. Discover how by faith he overcame life's disappointments to live a life of purpose, and today as a leader, how he's fulfilling his destiny, helping others find a meaningful existence. This book will encourage your faith to overcome life's challenges. I love Faith City Church because there are so many happy people here. We have such a welcoming feeling when you walk in the doors. It's kind of like having a home away from home. I love Pastor Roma because he's a great example to follow. You know, I, I never had too much in my life in, the, in regards to a male figure, and it was just awesome to come in here and connect. And, and to meet Pastor Roma, he's down to earth, he's inviting, he's warm. He's friendly, you know, he'll, he'll meet you right where you're at, and I just love it. He, he presents the Word of God, he, he, he just articulates everything uh, about the love of God and everything properly and effectively. I just, it's changed my life. Whenever you're in the Thunder Bay area, we invite you to join our services at Faith City Church. Come visit our new location at 360 Black Bay Road with easy access from Highway 1117 Potter Avenue exit. Services are Sunday at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday at 7 p.m. We also offer children's, youth, and adult classes throughout the week. See our website at faithcitychurch.ca for more information. Like us on the Facebook page. We look forward to seeing you here. It didn't mean you'll never get attacked, but you're going to have enough faith in you when you start recognize it. I was reading last night, I've been listening to this uh, series on prayer by, by Brother Hagin. You know, Romans 8.26 says, for we, we don't know how to pray. Romans 8.26, he amplifies, for we don't know how to pray as we ought to. But what? The Holy Spirit, he can, he can make intercession for us with groanings. The word groanings is, is a long word. It means um, the Holy Spirit will take whatever you come against, he's going to come against. So if you've got a sickness and you're just relying only on medicine to get you well, then you better make sure that medicine is going to work for you. So he said, uh, you need to take a, come against that and pray in the Spirit and believe God and, and that the Spirit of God is going to help you overcome that infirmity. Infirmity always has to do with the flesh. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit in us makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be articulated in English speak, speaking. Because first of all, we don't know how to pray, but when we rely by faith in praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God will take whatever you have against that, whatever, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I was hearing something there. He said, he said, uh, some people won't get healed unless we pray this way. Some people, you just teach them and they'll receive it. But some of us need to pray in the Spirit to get them healed. Glory to God. And we've never got to the place where we pray that way and churches are empty. 
and young people are not coming to church, and you know, there's we need to we need to have a revival. Praise God, and and know that God's alive, and just be happy, rejoicing. I think if we have some success, the people start getting happy a little bit, eh? Yeah. He says, notice there, verse nine. He's talking about the devil, whom resist. If you don't fight, he can't fight for you. The Holy Spirit is sent to be our helper. So you have to purposely fight back. If you got a problem, you got to purposely fight back with, with the scripture. Getting the scripture in you, using that, because that's your sword of the spirit. Jesus said when he comes against you, he said, it is written. Yes. Matthew 4. Yes. Devil says, comes to Jesus. Jesus said, it's written in my word. It's written in the word. And so what, you, what we have to say, like Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord. Amen. Yes. I will say of the Lord. What are you saying about the Lord regarding that problem? I remember our president at Ramah said, you know, when every, time, every time you got a problem, Every time you run up against a hard place, the first thing you ought to ask yourself is what does God's word say about this situation? What does the word say about my case? Then we go to the word. This is wisdom. Now, whom resists steadfast, steadfast in what? In the faith. We resist him with the faith. That's why he says that First, uh, Second Peter 1 and 2, that precious faith. I just sense the anointing over here, man. I'm telling you. I'm getting hotter and hotter over here. Something, something's going on. <laughs> How many just sense that? Just a sweeping of the Spirit right now over this place. There, there, there's a greater level of faith right now than when we first started. It's amazing. How many of you actually sense that? You just kind of know that? No? No. He says in there, whom resists steadfast in the faith? Look at, look at, knowing. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Knowing. Steadfast in the faith. Knowing. You cannot remain steadfast in the faith without knowing. The word gives light. Psalm says, the word gives light unto us, a light unto our path. See? You realize what's happened over here in a few seconds ago? We're in a, we're in a different realm of the spirit. No? He says, steadfast in the faith, knowing. So we have to understand, you see, knowing what? Knowing that the same afflictions or tests and trials are accomplished in your brethren that are, that are in the world. Knowing this, you know what? You're not the only one, and that faith inside of you is going to over, overcome that situation. That God put in you, we're all overcoming faith. Amen. Put your foot there and come back over here for a second. <laughs> I guess you can't put your foot there. Let's go to 1 John for a second. 1 John, we'll go visit 1 John. Because it's important to understand this, because everything we... You know, everything we need to know, like knowing this, when you know that God, is, God has put us in this together. The Lord said to me on, on uh, the Lord said this to me on Saturday. He said this to me, uh, here's what I want you to pray. I want you to pray for, there's a number of people that want to come to church Sunday morning. I want to get them there. He said, I, 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 want, you, I want you to pray. And he led me through a prayer. He said, I want you to bind every spiritual force that has caused people to stay home and stay away from church. Because there's a number of people that want to come to church, but they're being dissuaded, impeded, and hampered by Satan through tests and trials. And they don't want to come because they don't, make, they don't have enough energy to make the effort. He said, I want to anoint that service from beginning to end. I want to anoint every singer, every usher, 
every children's worker. I want to anoint, anoint everything in that service on, Saturday, on Sunday. He said, if you just pray this right now, I want you to bind the enemy, and you tell him to get his hands off those people that want to come. And begin to, to say, devil, you get your hands off him right now. I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus, the evil spirit. Let him go. And angels of God, go forth and cause them to have enough energy, cause them to get, get here and where they're supposed to be because you want to speak to them. Amen. And he did. People said, I need to be at that service. I, I'm, I'm glad I came. I, I got something out of that. There's a little extra when the Holy Ghost is there. Now, it's every, now God's not going to make people force people that don't want to come. He's not going to force. But there are some people who want to come, they will come. So continue to tell your neighbor to come. Because you say, well, no, they might not like it. Well, how do you know? Uh, I don't want to bring them to the pastor. They might get drunk in this room. Well, how do you know they don't like that? <laughs> we always think we know what God can do, what, what, he, you know, what he wants. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember the first time I went to a Pentecostal church. I grew up in a Catholic church where nothing ever happens. It's very predictable. Everything was just predicted every t- time, every, all, everything was done. You knelt at a certain time. I could know exactly when we're kneeling and when the, when the benediction is given. So I went to a Pentecostal church one time. Not the Pentecostal church here, but one in, in, the, in the city. I went there. There was a man there. He got up and he, he started shaking. I could hear all this change in his pocket. <laughs> I, said, I said, what in the world is this? I didn't know whether to laugh or run out the door. I mean, I was laughing, and, and, and it, it scared me, see? I didn't understand that. But, but something about it, even though I got uh, uh, disturbed a little bit, but something, I think there's something here that I'm interested in. See, my spirit knew more than my head. See, your spirit can catch things and say, that's okay, but your head says, what is going on over here? <laughs> see, because we need to renew our mind in the Word. See, everything in the Bible, even in the Bible, the apostles were spread. See, Jesus walking on the water. Well, we've never seen this before. Huh? He's casting a devil out over there. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, uh, when I was preaching up north, the Lord said to me right in the middle of a sermon, he said, stop your meeting right now, stop your sermon. There's a lady right back there I want you to pray for her right now. And I went on preaching because I thought that was an odd place to ask for somebody to pray while I'm preaching. So the Lord said to me again, I'm, I went on and prayed. He said, stop that, stop right now. And there's a lady back there. He didn't say which one, how he looked. Like. Which one, Lord? Why didn't he say with the green jacket on and, and the purple hat? I would have known. But he said, no. When God told uh, the prophet, I think it was Nathan, was it Nathan? Go and anoint um, uh, one of uh, Saul's sons, or uh, 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 one of the sons, uh, um, Samuel, was it Samuel, right? Samuel, go and anoint one of Jesse's sons. He said, go, I have, I'm going to go to uh, Jesse's house and anoint one of his sons. Why did he just say this little boy <laughs> called David? <laughs> See, we don't always know. We want to know everything, right? We want to know. God, show me everything first. You want me to do that project? Give me the money right now. Come on, hand it up right now. Huh? If we, if God was, you know, we, when God tells, you know, when God told Abraham, right? He says to Abraham, "Listen, Abraham, I want you to get out of your country, get out of your home, get out from your relatives, and and go to a place that I will show you." He didn't say it's about you know, two thousand miles from here. It's by the lake, you know. No, he just said, "I want you to go." See, a lot too often. You know, uh, when God begins to speak to us, we, don't all, we always want to know everything. See, this is faith. It's following God. When the Lord called Anita and I to go to, to Tulsa, we didn't have any money. None. None. But he said, I want you to go to Tulsa and, and go. He said, I want you to go there right now. If you don't go now, you can never, ever go. So I said, okay. We didn't have any money. Like, We've asked students to come in Bible school here, but they can't because they don't have $1,500. We need $30,000. But we didn't have it. And you can't find $1,000 to come to Bible school because God asked you to? 
No, you, got, you, you, you spent $1,000 on clothing last month. <laughs> right? You can push off some things for a while. But, you know, we need to follow the Lord. 1 John 5, 4, <clears throat> he says in here, For whatsoever or whoever is born of God. How many of you are born of God? Okay. You're born again. You're born of God. You're, you're, you might be, uh, uh, you know, Chicano or uh, you might be Mexican or you might be Ojibwe, but you're born of God. Amen? Yeah. So some people, so, they're so like into this, you know, I'm native. I'm, I'm you know, First Nations. I'm, I'm Italian. I'm Finnish. Well, so what? Shut up. Uh, you, are you born again? Thank you for tuning in the program. Listen, I want to pray for you. If you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, now is the time. The Bible says now is the time. There's no other time better than right now. You go ahead and say, Jesus, uh, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. Come into my life. Change my life. I cannot save myself. Be my Lord, my Savior. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can have a new life starting right now if you said that prayer. Write to us. We'll be uh, expecting a call from you, and we'll send you something to help you grow in your faith.